Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, search begins for new water CEO. Unlimited technology access leads to problems. An operation Yalon Day to counter crime this festive season. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. A new chief executive for the Water Authority is expected to be announced soon. The new CEO will replace Opatai Ravai, whose contract has been discontinued. This has been confirmed by WAF Chairman P.L. Munasinghe this afternoon. Munasinghe thanked Ravai for his excellent work over the past five years, however added that it's time to position the authority to meet the engineering and technical challenges ahead. He says WAF is entering a new era that is becoming highly technical, and a person with extensive hands-on experience in water and wastewater project development to lead the authority is needed. He says they have started to recruit a potential leader with a stronger engineering and technical background in water and wastewater management. The new CEO will oversee major projects that are scheduled to begin early next year, including the Greater Suva Area Water and Wastewater Scheme. Serious concerns have been raised about the unlimited access to information that's available on the cyberspace. Telecommunications Minister Ayas Said Kayyum says access to the Internet over the years has become widely available. Rachel Nuth with the story. More than 550,000 smartphones are currently being used in Fiji, with more operational SIM cards that exceed the number of people in the country. This tool, this access to not only get information, but to be able to impart information. So the question is, what type of information is being accessed? What type of information is being imparted? Do we need regulation in that space? Side Kiyum says most criminal activities involving cyberspace have risen due to the unlimited access to technology. However, he adds there are certain limitations in the Constitution to the right of expression. These are, of course, matters of law and offences that weren't in existence 10, 15 years ago. They are suddenly new areas, but it also requires us to be able to constantly change the law. Said Kiyum adds it's important for all relevant stakeholders to work collectively to combat these cyber issues. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The police Christmas operation Yalon Day will be activated from tomorrow and is expected to include several operations to counter criminal activities during this festive season. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio says while they've been able to clamp down on the crime wave that has plagued the month of December in previous years, Fijians are advised to be vigilant with their own safety and their property. Maggie Boyle reports. It's that time of the year. Crimes of opportunity tend to spike, and it's for this reason that the police are stepping up their game. Uh, a series of activities uh, that we are undertaking, which we obviously cannot divulge. Uh, they'll be uniformed, uh, uh, unmarked operations uh, uh, that we'll be involved in. Uh, so far, since the month of November, uh, we haven't had any major uh, robbery or planned robberies. The commissioner has admitted that they can't do all the work themselves. So we continuously ask the, the public uh, to take care of themselves uh, and their properties. Let your neighbors know you're going. Let your relatives know if the house is left empty, if there's someone you can get to look after the property, do so. Uh, traveling in vehicles, do not leave valuables exposed uh, with windows open uh, while driving through. While police has been effective in curbing some crimes, Gileho says they cannot rest on their laurels. We are moving around town as well. We are telling people that we see with open handbags or their pockets are not zipped, reminding them, please zip your pockets, be careful of what you're carrying in your back pocket or your right pocket or whatever it is. So we are, we are all, uh, all out on those activities. The rest of the, those uh, activities, we'd rather keep close to our chest at the moment uh, as we go through. 
Our criminals are smarter. They are studying us as well. Operation Yalonde will be effective over the next four weeks. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Speaker of Parliament Dr. Chico Luveni says decisions in Parliament and the conduct of members of Parliament is continually scrutinised by the general public. With live televised screenings of the sittings, Dr. Luveni says Fijians are even more aware of parliamentary proceedings and it's for this reason the civic education programme has been set up to address queries. Dr. Luveni says there are close to 60 bills currently before the various committees which are expected to be tabled in the 2018 Parliament session. Why these decisions and some of the rulings that I make, they will question and, uh, and in particular some of the uh, decisions made that were blamed on me as the speaker. So I really had to go to, to the community and tell them I have no say at all in what uh, parliaments um, um, uh, uh, approve, uh, especially in motions in parliament. I have no say in, on, on, on uh, what to approve and uh, what not to approve. National airline Fiji Airways and Cathay Pacific, the home carrier of Hong Kong, have extended their code share deal, making it easier for Fiji Airways guests to travel from Nandi to Thailand via Hong Kong. The code share will see Fiji Airways place its FJ code on Cathay Pacific's Hong Kong to Bangkok flights, available for booking from today. It's effective for travel from January 14th next year. Fiji Airways Managing Director and CEO Andre Fillion said they're delighted to extend their code share agreement with them to include one of Asia's most popular destinations, Bangkok. Fiji Airways guests will be able to travel seamlessly from Nandi to Bangkok through Cathay Pacific's Hong Kong hub up to five times a week. Similarly, guests from Bangkok will find it convenient to book travel directly on Fiji Airways for travel to Fiji. Fiji Airways operates between Nandi and Hong Kong up to five times a week. Still to come, FRA calls on Suva commuters to be patient. An FNU Alumni Association to hold elections next year. Stay with us. Bula, Kero Mai Sinatoka, Kero Ndotali Takanavaro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have an interview. I have a civil talent, a good Ramay Naomani, and Roma. We do tell it again to the Venezuela, the good Rongo, Barong in a radio Fijuan, Nandumivit. The radio Fijuan, Nandumivit in Honga and Vienna. Six major road upgrades are currently taking place in Suva and FRA is pleading with commuters to be patient. Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says he understands the frustration of travellers but is reminding the public this will only take a few months. Rachel Nuth reports. Expect more traffic congestion this festive season as FRA works on six major roads that need improvement. The public is reminded that repairs are nearing completion. We need to get through what we're doing now. If we were to say, OK, let's stop working on King's Road until we finish Batawanga and Stinson, that's just going to prolong the agony. So uh, what, I, what I'm hoping people understand is that we're trying to get through this over the next... We're only really talking a few months from now. A few months from now, the network will be far better. Moore says once the work is completed, the accessibility will be far greater. You'll have bridges open, you'll have longer sections of King's Road functional, Grantham will be functional. So. Rather than stop things and leave them in a, in a poor condition or half finished, half finished condition, let's push through it for a few months. Moore has reassured the public that work of this magnitude will not be repeated. And then after that, this won't happen again. There will be roads worked on and there will be congestion. I'm not saying there will be no congestion, but it won't be five parts of the network at the same time. It will be one, maximum two. FRA has confirmed the Suvanasori four-lane road project, Gaji Grantham Road Roundabout and the Nambua Mid-Road Roundabout will be completed by the first half of next year. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Edinburgh Drive in Suva, which is currently down to a single lane, could possibly see a complete closure in the next couple of days. Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says when their contractors were carrying out maintenance work, a crack that runs for 20 metres was identified. Moore says this is an old slip that could possibly lead into a potential landslip. 
He adds the location of this slip is on an exposure surface with a drop of 40 meters into the water below. Therefore, FRA has cleared out the area by cutting down surrounding trees. He adds a team conducted survey this morning and saw no movement. He says if this continues, it could possibly be open. However, this is all subject to the conditions of the situation. Uh, with the team when they come back from site, we'll look to maybe open the uh, inside lane again. But I want to stress, if we, if we get the, the concern raised again that there is movement, we're going to monitor the movement every day now, probably twice a day. We're monitoring the points that we put in the ground yesterday. Um, twice a day we'll do that. If we find the ground is moving, we will close the road. Um, so over the next day or two, we're going to put together a, a proposal. It's like an action plan. If the road is closed, these are the routes to take. Fiji National University's alumni needs to impart the knowledge that they have to be of benefit for the current students. FNU's Alumni Association President Netani Sukanaivalu says this isn't only for academic purposes, but to teach students to be good role models in the workforce. Savaira Thambor reports the association will hold its second election in February next year and is urging all alumni to find a way forward for the institution. Some of the benefits of the establishment of an alumni association will assist some FNU courses be recognized not only locally but internationally as well. A Bachelor of Engineering program was in doubt a few years ago as there was no discussions with the professional body overseas to have it recognized. Luckily, the alumni stepped in. So we're very pleased that IPNC has agreed and endorsed the, uh, the, uh, the uh, curriculum and they have given uh, FNU four years to prepare the university for the final uh, uh, recognition of their program. FNU alumni believes an election of a new association will strengthen their network and support programs with the university. It's a real uh, opportunity for alumni students, alumni, uh, to give back to the uh, institution where they were trained, more so because uh, this in the uh, college now the College of Engineering, Science and Technology has got programs now that, have, that we have developed to really help uh, our young people. We encourage this because we have a connect group with other international um, bodies and universities where it will help our students and will generate research topics for our students and also help in the, the building and the development of our country as well. The Alumni Association election will be held on February 16th and all alumni are invited to participate in the election to select a body of members who will represent their best interest. Registrations will be open from the 18th to the 29th of this month. Sabera Tamboa, FBC News. A lot of issues were raised during the tour of the REACH project team in the Western Division. The purpose of the tour was to raise awareness on the rights in the Constitution and provide economic, legal and social services to Fijians in the West. Topics such as land issues, individual rights, social rights and economic rights were raised during the tour. This is for those of you who have passed the age of 65 years. Don't come and ask if you are 63, 64 or 55 years old because this is not a FNPF pension. This is a social pension scheme. Only if you are 65 then we will see and there is also one condition. You are not supposed to be getting money from FNPF under the pension scheme or the ex serviceman scheme. Ahead in sports with Jamie, Fiji Hockey makes a winning start in the Oceania Challenge Cup, but up next is Rachel with Business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Shiron Motors launches new showroom. And in growing Fiji, newly revamped Martin Tur Road to open tomorrow. Stay with us. Bula FM number 2 in the Serie. In business tonight, Shiller Motors Limited will be launching their first ever Subaru showroom.
uh, in Suva this evening. The $6 million showroom aims to provide the best sales and service experience to existing and new customers. It's also the second fully air-conditioned showroom in the country. And we now cross live to our journalist Kelly Vidala who is at the showroom. Kelly, tell us more about this showroom and how has the car dealership business grown in Fiji? Yes, Rachel, I'm here in Kasanti, Botswana, where Sridhar Motors Limited have not yet launched their new showroom, but they will in a couple of minutes. As you can see behind me, it's a very classy and modern setup, and they've put on uh, Subaru vehicles that's the latest on the market for display. But here with me very quickly is the Sridhar Motors Limited CEO, Mr. Arvino Ryan. Mr. Narayan, I know a lot of effort has gone into putting this up. What more could you tell us about the showroom? Yeah, I know, like, this is one of the uh, dedicated showroom for Subaru brand of vehicles, and this is one of its kind in Fiji. And uh, this is a fully air-conditioned uh, showroom, and we are very pleased to have this facility in. And uh, the industry is growing, and uh, this year we look at about 5% motor industry growth. And uh, tonight we are going to launch a new Subaru XV, it's a 2018 model, and uh, that is one of the latest products that we'll be launching tonight. All right, thank you, Mr. Narayan, for your time. Thank well, you. there you have it. Um, it's the latest uh, Subaru vehicles here on display at the new showroom. Uh, this is for to provide the best customer experience and also to bring in the best sales for Fijians. Rachel. Thanks, Kelly. FBC News would like to apologize for an error that was made in our business segment last night. We had mentioned that Kentucky Finance has more than 7,000 customers and has tipped over 1 million in term deposit funds. It should have been tipped over 100 million in term deposit funds. We do apologize for this and any inconvenience caused. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Thanks, Rachel. Let's look at some of the news making headlines in the financial markets. The U.S. Federal Reserve raised its benchmark interest rate by 25 basis points this morning. It retained its positive outlook on growth and employment, but is still concerned about inflation. U.S. inflation rate for November came in at 2.2 percent as expected. Australia released its unemployment rate during the day. Unemployment rate remains steady at 5.4 percent. The participation rate was 65.5% versus expected 65.1. In the upcoming releases, we will see the Swiss National Bank announce its interest rate decision, while the United Kingdom would be releasing its retail sales data. Tomorrow morning, Bank of England and European Central Bank will also announce their interest rate decision. However, both are expected to remain unchanged. And that's all for now, Rachel. Vinaka. Thanks, Sharon. Looking at today's current exchange rates set each morning for the Fijian dollar. The Fijian dollar had a relatively mixed day. It rose against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar, the, and the PNG Kina, and dropped against the Australian and New Zealand dollars, the euro, and the Japanese yen. As for the commodities market, oil prices dropped to close at 56.79 a barrel. Gold was up to close at 1,254 an ounce, and silver followed suit, closing at 16.03 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, there will be no traffic from tomorrow as the road from Martinta to Wailola Junction in Namaka Nandi will be fully opened. Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says the entire road from the airport to the Wailola Junction will be completely open. Moore says there are around three incomplete service roads in these areas which are expected to be completed by April next year. There is still work to do. Uh, a few small areas with service lanes. The, one of the problems with Martin Tower is that it suffers greatly when you have uh, properties accessing the main highway. So the intention in Martin Tower is that every property is serviced either from a side road or from the rear or from the service lane. And that makes the traffic flow on the main highway far better. And that's a wrap from business this evening. Do join Akasita from tomorrow for your latest business news as this is it for me this year. I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. But do join Jamie now for sports.
Thanks, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Volma settles for silver at mini games. And Sevens captain says there's no excuse for their losses. Details after the break. मैं प्रमिला वायरुकु रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफर की से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम PG Athletics bagged another gold medal today at the Pacific Mini Games in Vanuatu. Petro Vetango Maki winning the men's 1500 meters final. Arobo beginning to make a move, so too is Fiji. Renata Maki beginning to make his move. Here he comes on the outside. Arobo was there, and Godwell has been swollen up. So it's going to be Fiji, Papua New Guinea, a bit of push and shove. What's going to happen to Vanuatu? One, three, six. Where's the mark? He's going to get this for Fiji. Aurora holding on. This unlikely head action of his sees him home. Fiji's Eugene Volma failed to defend his gold medal in the men's triple jump. Volma had to settle for a silver medal, jumping a distance of 13.30 meters behind Papua New Guinea's Richard, Richard Peniel, who jumped 15.54 meters in the final. Curious now, really getting into this game face on. <laughs> He's done this so often before. 215 champ, Oceania. Certainly got the best credentials in this field, but can he produce it on the day? There's a suggestion that he's carrying a slight injury. Fiji's big hope. Oh, again, wonderful extension. You could see the big splash of water. And the Fiji women's beach volleyball team lost its final round robin match against Papua New Guinea by two straight sets. Despite the loss, the side still progresses to the semi final. To win the battle in Pool B. Again, a shot one over from Bayer. So clever. And that's a wonderful performance here from the PNG duo. Emily Bayer and Michelle Wallo gets it done in two straight sets. PG Boxing's gold medal hopeful Winston Hill has won his first fight, beating Vanuatu's Martin Nayu on points last night. Winston faces Tonga's Tomasi Lalakai in the 69 kilogram semi final later tonight. Martin Nayu is like, like an ever ready battery, he just won't stop. Shakes his head, he said, Is that all you can do? Oh, good left hook. Now he'll come straight back into it. Not long to go. Who's going to finish on? Oh, it's Newey. It's Newey. Oh, yes. What a fight. Listen to this. Is it five out of five? Well, it's not. The Fiji Airways National Sevens team isn't making any excuses for returning without a tournament title after the first leg of the World Series, failing to reach the final in both Dubai and Cape Town. The team accepts there's a lot to improve on to have any chance of winning the 2017-18 Series Commonwealth Games and World Cup next year. Vasnil Prasad reports. Not expected atmosphere in Nandi yesterday as the Fiji 7's team returned winless from Dubai and Cape Town 7's. A lot to work on after being bundled out by South Africa in both the tournaments. Uh, right now, we, uh, there's no excuse. There's no ex excuse of losing. Injury has been a major concern to the side. Fitness and defense are also saw some areas which the team will look into. Uh, we have the review of uh, both tournaments and... Uh, 
and we see that uh, we can uh, we can uh, compete at that level even though there's a lot of uh, new boys coming to the squad for coach gareth baber it was a bit away going out of the two tournaments yeah tough tough lessons and uh, you know hopefully they stand us in good stead moving forward with Dubai and Cape Town 7s done and dusted, the players now take a break before coming into camp next week. Then we'll get them back in next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week, where they'll do a good conditioning block. And then they'll have some time off over the Christmas, uh, spend with their families. Sydney 7s is next stop over for our national team, where they're pulled with Cape Town 7s champions New Zealand, Samoa and Russia. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The AFL Fiji Tribe under-14 team wrapped up its four-day friendly match against the touring Australian Wanderers at Suba's Albert Park this morning. The Australian side returned stronger today, beating Fiji 35-24 to after their 78-58 to loss yesterday. Meli Tavanga reports. The Fijian side won three of their four matches which started on Monday. Coach Madhu Rinda saluted his players for their effort in the last three days. They did their best and uh, the Wanderers uh, uh, pulled their socks up and uh, they won their first, uh, first game. But uh, for the kids, for the Fiji tribe, I salute them for the effort they did from uh, the Oceania uh, till today. The four-day meet has given our youngsters a chance to expose their talents. It's a, g a great uh, opportunity for us because it's a new game and some of the kids are, uh, I know this game about two, uh, two, three months now, but when we they, when they play the games, uh, we can see the, the eager they come to into their when they they playing these games. Yes. The Australians have much to take back with them after the meet. It's been really good the, from the first tour that we've had. The feedback that we that we've got is that the um, the buyback that we've had from the Fijians and the support has been fantastic, not only from the players but from their families, AFL Fiji, and the entire community. Meanwhile, the AFL Fiji tribe will go on a break this festive season and resume training in January next year. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. The Fiji men's president's hockey team defeated the Japanese under-21 side two goals to one at the hockey center in Suva during the Oceania Challenge Cup last night. Despite the win, the Fijian side believes they have a lot more to offer at the competition. Eroni Tuinuku reports. Fiji hockey head coach Hector Smith says he has a young side that can create upsets in the competition. They're a very tactical team, they're a very disciplined team. Uh, they hardly call to each other, they just know where one another is running. We knew we had to be on our A game. The Fijians have identified their weaknesses and will work on improving these areas before the playoffs. I think our positional discipline uh, let us down in the third quarter. Uh, we tried to attack in the last quarter when we scored, and, uh, but we left it too late. Uh, but in the first half, we matched the team you know, uh, right up to the end, and today we've taken Japan uh, right up to the wire. And Meanwhile, the young Japanese team have learned a lot from their match against the Fijians. Uh, their physical strength was pretty much the difference today, and we could really feel it out on the pitch today. The difference between strength and age between the players. Their experience definitely shone through today. The national hockey side have qualified to the semi-finals that will be played tomorrow and the final is scheduled for Saturday at the Hockey Centre. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media. Total Fiji launches new app. Catch that after the break. Bula, Kero Mai Sinatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Ndo Moi Viti. I have a new thing. 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 Fijians can now easily find any Total service station around the country with the use of a mobile application. This is after Total Fiji launched the application in Suva last night with an aim to keep its customers up to date with the company's latest activities. Kelly Vavala reports.
can find the Total Fiji mobile app can be downloaded from Google Play and comes in handy if your car unexpectedly runs out of fuel or when you need to get to the nearest convenience store. It's a station finder. Um, there are promotion opportunities. There are um, sales opportunities in there. There's also ways of contacting us to tell us about it. You can even rate your station. Uh, you go to a particular station on a regular basis, you can, you can give a rating of up to five stars. Total Fiji has more than 30 operational service stations in the country, which has all been registered in the mobile app. The important part of this app is that uh, you are linked or you are um, always uh, updated with all the news and announcement of Total Fiji, the road shows, the discounts, the promotions. So here in Fiji, we had to obviously locate all of our stations on maps, make sure the addresses were correct, make sure that they were being picked up correctly, that the, the, the locator was working correctly from wherever you may be. The Total app has been in existence for some time and has been used mostly in parts of Europe. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. And it's weather time now with Angie. there and welcome to the weather world. The weather is not looking good at all. We are dealing with showers around the nation and it will stick around for a few more days. Well, let's hope for the best. Looking in the west today, there were showers on this side too, probably to cool things off. Eastwards from Pekhavarasuva, drizzles was the weather scenario throughout. And up north, after a few showers, conditions cleared. At sea, East to southeast winds 10 to 50 knots with moderate seas. And for the tides, high tide tomorrow morning will be at 5.09 with low tide at 10.53. Sunrise will be at 6.25. For tomorrow, hooray for Friday, but unfortunately, the weather is not in our favour. We are looking at heavy showers throughout the nation. Tomorrow's stems, Suva and Savu Savu will be the coolest with highs of 28 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, Massive showers with thunderstorms are likely for the country. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, do you see a difference in the price of food as we head towards Christmas? Price of the food items are really going high and uh, from compared to last festive season. The trolley size is same, but the price has doubled up. Yes, the food price is increasing. Yes, because uh, many uh, stores, they try to compete because of uh, Christmas and uh, they try to con uh, attract people to come to buy the product. Yes, the food price has moved up in this system. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, we have heard it before, but new research reconfirms that coffee is a healthy drink. But some of the other habits associated with the ritual of drinking coffee are not. Recapping the main story, search begins for new water CEO. Unlimited technology access leads to problems. And Operation Yalonde to counter crime this festive season. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should NCD education be implemented in the school curriculum? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, sent in by Silas Sandelai. This picture was taken from Korodvao in Marekamba from Dakaundrove. What a beautiful day in paradise. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe. Good night. मैं प्रमिला वायरुकु रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आँख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम हॉट आई लव मिर्ची एफएम हम एस बी इन पाकिस्तान वो आके मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफएम 
It's hot. hot.